Soil. It's among the planet's most vital natural resources. It makes food production possible, provides the basis for fuel and fibre production, and is crucial for water availability, nutrient recycling, and organic carbon stocks. It represents about one quarter of global biodiversity. It takes between a hundred and a thousand years to form just one centimetre of soil. And because it's all around us, we tend to overlook the fact that soils are a limited resource. And because threats such as erosion, nutrient decline, acidification, salinization, compaction and pollution can destroy one centimetre of soil in just one to ten years. It's a resource that is seriously under threat. Despite this, we're making increasing demands on this depleting resource. The world's cultivated land area has grown by 12% in the last 50 years. And agricultural production has increased as much as threefold, according to a study by the UN's Food and Agriculture Organization. And rapid population growth means that by 2050, global demands for food will have further increased by 60%. Our food and energy needs require an increase and intensification of production that in many areas are not sustainable using current practices. And in many areas natural disasters, climate change and land and soil degradation are already threatening the existence of many already vulnerable populations. It's very clear, if we don't protect the basis of food production, the basis of our ecosystems, that's land and water, our soils, we will have a big problem in the future. But while the pressures we put on our soil resources are significant, there are practices that can offer sustainable solutions. In eastern Bolivia, the farmers of the rural communities in the Chiquitania region found that yields from their traditional banana and coffee crops were decreasing because their dry season was becoming longer and rain patterns were more erratic. But as livestock producers, they had the ideal product that would help capture the soil's water content and retain it for longer periods. Adding their cow manure to the fields has helped increase production by as much as three or four times, securing access to food and incomes. A continent away, Kenyan farmers have been conscious of a reduced yield from their soil over the last 12 years. But the application of sustainable soil management practices, such as the building of terraces and the production of compost, promises to improve soil fertility and boost production. And this will have a wider impact on poverty reduction and food security in that area. These local examples are the result of a global investment into knowledge about soil. Anybody who is interested in growing crops and wants to do that better than in the past and more precise in terms of making the right use of the soil has an essential use of some kind of soil information. But as the need to understand the challenges and solutions in soil science has increased, so global investment into agriculture has diminished significantly in the last 30 years. One of the unfortunate consequences of the worldwide decline of investment into agriculture during the 1980s and 1990s uh, was an almost complete stopping of the survey and monitoring programs of, of soils. And this is now seen as a, a critical issue in being able to address the big issues of food security, uh, land degradation and climate change. Soils have become a second tier priority in the sustainable development agenda and there is now a need to join forces towards promoting its sustainable management. The Global Soil Partnership is an answer to that. We think the Global Soil Partnership adds tremendous value to our existing investments because it brings together a wide range of stakeholders that we could never bring together. There's enormous opportunity here to work together and to integrate data from various levels 
into a, a global soil partnership so that data are really interoperable from, from field level up to uh, a global level. It's time to learn how to protect our soil resources wisely and safeguard them for future generations. And we need to do that collectively and now. This will be the work of the Global Soil Partnership.